But, but in all instances, really, of, of this family, um, we've seen it over and over again in the newspaper articles, the newspaper clippings of their death announcements. Um, they would have the wakes here in the house. I don't know, again, I don't know if she died in the house, or but I know that her wake was here in the house. Okay. That's just how they did those things back then. I went downstairs, I heard shuffling going on in the piano room. Well, first, I saw a that white mist again in the piano room. And then I sat there and waited, and then I heard shuffling coming from the piano room. Then I heard it coming from the, I guess, dining room. So I got up, went to the dining room, and I heard shuffling going on in the room that I just came out of. So that room was one of our appliance repair people. When we first moved in the house, we called him to come fix our dryer, I think it was. And he said, you know, I almost didn't come because I, I was scared frankly, yeah. because I'd been in this house before, and I have seen a little girl, and the owner said that there was absolutely no little girl in this house. Hmm. Alabama is full of ghost stories. There's just not too many places you can go in our state without hearing tales of the strange, the paranormal, and the macabre. But are these stories true? Our crew will travel to these reportedly haunted locations to learn their history and investigate their claims. Our goal is to determine if there is any truth to the ghost stories that haunt our state. Located in the old Dolphin Way historic section of Mobile, the Kate Shepherd House was built in 1897 by Mr. and Mrs. Charles Martin Shepherd. The house was picked out of a catalog by the Shepherds, like many of these kinds of homes in the past. It reportedly required 13 rail cars to deliver from Knoxville, Tennessee to Mobile where it has now stood for over 120 years. The house now operates as a bed and breakfast ran by Wendy James and her husband, Bill. They'd moved from Louisiana to Mobile, choosing the Kate Shepherd house as the perfect location to start their bed and breakfast they'd always dreamt of running. Little did they know that when they bought the house, they also inherited the ghost from its past. The shelves in the house are full of personal items that belong to the Shepherds. Wendy and Bill found most of these items stored in the attic when they purchased the house and put them on display. Including Kate Shepard's personal Ouija board. Wendy, Bill, and the spirits that roam there aren't the only ones taking up residence in the Kate Shepard house. There's also Bo. Bo is also a therapy dog. Ooh. Uh, my husband went through the training with him. Uh, and um, kind of of therapy? he goes to um, the assisted living and he goes to March, which is. Hello. Um, you made a friend for life, Kevin. I gotta take him home now. <laughs> While I was trying to figure out a way to smuggle Bo out of the house unnoticed, Wendy started to give us a tour of the house. 
out of the catalog. And so this is Kate Shepard here on the wall. This is our Kate Shepard. It's the only picture picture we have of her, but she's here on the front lawn with some of the school children. This used to be a school. So as early as 1910, all the way through to her death in 1952. Yeah, February 52. She had a school here in the house. And so we have been visited by this young man in that plaid coat. Uh, and he was here in the 51-52 school year. So we know now that this was taken right around that time. And she died in February 52. So obviously that was taken very close to her death. And so you can just tell, too, there's younger children, there's older children. She was apparently way ahead of her time. She was doing Miss Kitty's kindergarten in like the 40s and the 50s. And yet she was taking older children in who had learning disabilities. You know, back in the 40s and the 50s, there was no such thing as ADA and, and all of the special needs that we now acknowledge and, and accommodate in our classrooms. They, they didn't have that back then. So she... Um, she was doing Miss Kitty's kindergarten. She was working with children who had dyslexia. And our darling neighbor across the street, she's 96 years old, she remembers a car pulling up for years and Kate and Isabel going out to help the, the parents pop the trunk and carry the young lady in the house mm -hmm. and getting the wheelchair out of uh, the trunk because she could only be educated here. Yeah. Uh, there was no such thing as wheelchair ramps and so forth. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So again, she was way ahead of her time. So she dies in 52, her sister Isabel in 53, and then their widowed brother Horace moves in, and he stayed the rest of his life here, and he died in the house in 1973. And then this fireplace and mantle is a great example, too, that um, throughout all the house, we have nine fireplaces and, and mantles, and they're all original to the house, and yet, and yet they're common. You know, you see other, you go into other catalog homes by this particular architect and you'll see the same mantle and the same fireplace. But we loved it that uh, so many of the original features in the house are still here, like the fireplaces and mantles. The summer covers are still here. A lot of original light fixtures are still here. The picture rail in all of the rooms, original. So we obviously, we love that about the house. And then in this bookcase, these are Kate Shepard's personal things as well as some of the other things that we found in the attic. And then if you notice, there's a Ouija board oh, on the bottom oh. shelf. <laughs> I don't Ooh. know where it is. Yeah. Presents in here. Yeah. That. She had not one but two Ouija boards. Oh. Made by Hasbro? <laughs> <laughs> Hasbro makes Ouija boards. That's so weird. That's interesting. I wonder if that's where all the energy and activity is coming from, is from those boards. It's from one yeah. of those. Yeah. All of us had entered this room during our initial walk through the house. None of us had noticed the Ouija board during the walkthrough, but all felt as though something strange was going on in there, including malfunctions in our equipment. Our camera's audio cut out so bad we couldn't even use our original interviews for this documentary. Before Wendy took us upstairs to show us the second floor, I started to snap a few pictures on the first floor. It was here that I caught something in one of the photos that was pointed out to us by one of our friends on Facebook. Something we can't explain. Coming up. I haven't used this camera at all. One of the bars is already gone. Well, I said this one, I've been charging that for an hour. There's no air vent over here. Bro, this chain right here is moving. We're getting a lot of stuff in here. What's up? A lot yeah, this of... started moving. I heard a, what sound like an old girl like scream or something. I saw line. something move in this mirror. This is Kayla and Rachel, and there was an orb that flew by your head just now. We 
getting our official tour of the Kate Shepherd house. There was already a strange feeling, especially from the library with the Ouija board. I'd snapped a few pictures and uploaded them to Facebook when I got a message from our friend James Harbin. He told me to look closely at one of the pictures. I quickly pulled it back up to find what almost resembled a skeletal figure in the mirror. Could this be the spirit of Horace, who died in the house? Wendy then took us upstairs to show us our rooms for the night. She also told us about things guests have experienced there over the years. This is what room? The barber room. Ooh. Yeah, we named it after the architect. And you'll see on the, the walls the different artwork. Remember how I was telling you downstairs it's the most published house in Mobile? Well, yeah. All of this artwork is of our house. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you'll, you'll see it all across this room. And then in the bathroom on the wall are some pen and inks. They are actually our twin sisters. So they're houses that were chosen from the same catalog and the same floor plan. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's Bo's favorite window. <laughs> oh, he loves that window. <laughs> he will push his way in. I tell the guests you have not to latch the door. Because yeah. he pushes his way in and he goes to his window. <laughs> As if on cue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we're outside and we see something in the window. It's, it's him. It's, it's him. <laughs> <laughs> and we named this room Isabel's room because this was Kate Shepard's sister's room and her name was Isabel. She died in 1953. We're not sure if she died here in the house. But, but in all instances, really, of, of this family, um, We've seen it over and over again in the newspaper articles, the newspaper clippings of their death announcements. Um, they would have the wakes here in the house. I don't know, again, I don't know if she died in the house, or but I know that her wake was here in the house. Okay. That's just how they did those things back then. So between these two rooms and one of the back rooms, remember I was telling you about the story about the little girl? Yes. Okay. So it was this back junk room right now. Um, there was a contractor. Actually, no, the contractor was the barber room. So that room was one of our appliance repair people. When we first moved in the house, we called him to come fix our dryer, I think it was. And he said, you know, I almost didn't come because I, I was scared, frankly, yeah. because I'd been in this house before, and I have seen a little girl. And the owner said that there was absolutely no little girl in this house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just, w when I got your call, I thought, oh, I don't want to do this. Yeah. So anyway, he came back, and obviously the little girl didn't show up, so he was okay after that. Yeah. So then, uh, fast forward a couple of years later, a contractor, we added the bathroom in, in the barber room. Mm -hmm. A contractor came to me one day, because he knew I had a young granddaughter. And he came to me one day and said, I didn't know your, daughter, your granddaughter were, was visiting. And that's when I said she wasn't. And he said, well, there's a little girl running around the house. So, you know. And then a woman in this ha in this room, a grandmother staying here with her granddaughter, said a little girl opened her door in the middle of the night and uh, came in the room. And she happened to be awake and she, she sat up because she, for whatever reason, she was awake. Yeah. Because I, and I had not told her this story prior. So I, of course, I did tell her after. Yeah. They were about to leave. Yeah. So apparently a little girl came in the room, opened up the door, and walked around there, and she said, well, hello, how are you? And she didn't say anything, and she turned around and left. So, of course, the next morning she's saying, Who, what little girl has a room to, uh, a key to my room? Yeah. <laughs> so, so the little girl story is, um, is common. And then my 96-year-old neighbor, who's been there since 1934, I think, she has heard the story of someone visiting and they came upstairs, they wanted to see upstairs, and they came upstairs and were apparently frightened by a vision of a little girl and, and left abruptly. After telling us of three different people seeing this little girl, Wendy took us down to the kitchen to share even more strange experiences that happened there. Follow me in here. This is the original butler's pantry. Ooh. 
as you can see, it's beautiful old wood and the old matches here that are all still operable. I like that little sink. <laughs> that was added through the years, but this is original. And one of our experiences, we've been standing right here talking to guests. And as you can see, this is latched. Yeah. Right? And you, you can't really. Yeah, it won't pull open. Yeah. That door right there popped open and flew open. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think you told me that on the phone. That's that's the this is the location of that. Isabel's bathroom is right above the butler's pantry. And one morning I am serving a table full of ladies. They were teachers here for a conference and I'm serving them. Just about to serve. And there is a wall. I mean it is just it is like a shower of water just coming right here from, from other, you can still see the stains on the ceiling. Oh, yeah. Now, we assume it's that bathroom, toilet, shower. Yeah. So of course, I run upstairs, I'm banging on the door, the woman comes to the door, I'm like, something's going on in your bathroom. Yeah. And of course, there was nothing amiss. The toilet had an overflow, the shower wasn't leaking. So it lasted maybe oh, for about bad. two minutes, which of course created havoc, and I'm just oh. about to serve breakfast. Um, and of course I called the plumber and showed him the mess and showed him that, and he said to me, I have absolutely no idea where that came from. <laughs> Are you sure you didn't spill water, he says. Yeah. So, and then this, the same thing happened in that particular room down here. Um, Bill and I were traveling and we actually had a house sitter and she was sleeping in our room downstairs yeah. and the guests were upstairs and she's, oh, she's, she's woken with water coming down the wall. Yeah. So it's basically the same thing. She runs upstairs, she bangs on the door and says something's amiss in your bathroom because it's the barber bathroom above that wall. Yeah. Well nothing had overflowed, it was sleeping, it was the middle of the night so there was, there was nothing that could have spilled. Call the plumber, another plumber because by this time it's another year or two later. Yeah. And he basically said the same thing. I have no idea where that water came from. Yeah. Yeah. And then actually in this room, I have also had, well, I've had one of those plates fly off of that wall and hit the floor. And fortunately it hit a rug and it did not break. Those are antique plates. Okay. So for, you can tell. <laughs> yeah, fortunately they didn't break. But then another day, I was decorating this dining room table, and one of those plates, an antique, one of those plates on that mantle flew off and landed over here, and of course smashed bits. So, now, so, and as you can see, I, I can't explain any of that. Can, can I say definitively I have a ghost? We've talked about that on the phone, no. But I have a lot of that I can't explain. Definitely a lot of strange things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's and it's typically not just me. I mean it has happened when it's just me. When I've walked into a room and the radio turns on or um, walked into the kitchen and the microwave turns on or the dryer in the laundry room. I've had other people experience the same thing. After learning about the house and its haunting, we started to set up equipment. While testing the spirit box upstairs, a voice came through that said, Bill. Bill is the name of Wendy's husband, who unfortunately couldn't be there for our investigation. We ran a few more tests with our equipment and also set up a few trigger objects throughout the house. We left the house to go see the sights and get some food as we waited for night to fall in Mobile to begin our investigation. Coming up. Yeah, I could have sworn that moved. Like, not the lights, but the actual thing itself. I could have sworn it just moved. Yeah. Just heard something in the bathroom. If you want to use my arm, use my hand to write something, please just let us know what you want to say.
Night had fallen over the Kate Shepherd house as we prepared to begin our investigation. We had set up a toy ball on the stairs, and also set up a teddy bear in hopes that the little girl spirit would interact with them. It wasn't long before I forgot about the cables running to the camera. With the camera set back up, we went through the house, turning out the lights and switching on night vision cameras. Okay guys, we're starting the investigation now. We have the live feed going upstairs. Um, Jonathan and Sean are manning that at the moment. The rest of us are downstairs. We're going through right now, just turning off all the lights. I'm getting ready to really get this thing going. One thing I've been noticing about this place is all of our electrical equipment will not hold a charge for anything. I've been charging this one for about an hour and it's on one bar. While we were already experiencing a few things downstairs, Sean and Jonathan were running our Facebook live feed upstairs, where they were experiencing strange things as well. It does. It feels really dead up here. Whoa, what? Whoa. what? Oh, I don't know what I just saw in the mirror, but it was creepy. And over here? In that mirror, yeah. What did it look like? I don't know. It looked like something like a shadow doing this number. I don't know if it was reflecting off of that mirror or if it was off of this mirror. Oh, these mirrors are giving me chills too. I don't know, I was looking down at the spirit yeah. box. Well, I happened to look up and right when I looked up, I saw it do that number. Oh, the mirrors, mirrors. I've been watching a lot of spooky videos and one of them was about mirrors. Creepy. Said something else. Is this mirror that's hanging over the fireplace yours? Dude, I'm getting chills. Oh, I, fell out of me. I just I felt goosebumps just then. I don't have any goosebumps on me now. I felt like a chill go through me. Is this your mirror that's on the fireplace? As Sean and Jonathan were talking about how dead the room felt, Jonathan saw something in the mirror, forcing him to jump up and missed the voice on the spirit box saying, It's not. Whoa, Let's go to the what? Whoa. What? Let's whoa, go to the what? Whoa. What? People are saying they're seeing stuff. I saw several things. People up here, I saw it too. There's a lot of anomaly they said. Is it the cop? Did that just say Sean? It sounded like it said Sean again. We were up in this room earlier and the spirit box said my name. And when it did, it also turned on a microphone that Jonathan has up here. Is this your mirror by the door? If this is your mirror by the door, could you say so in this little black box that's sitting on this stool? Uh, Heather, we're at the Kate Shepherd House in Mobile, Alabama.
Whoa, did you just hear that? Not on that. I heard like a sound like a scream or something back behind me. Uh uh. Okay, it was Whoa, like that thing's moving. Look at it. Oh, it is moving. Let me see if there's any air vents over here. I don't think there is. There might be though. No. You don't feel any air? There's no. If there was air, this would be blowing. There's no air out there. Dude, I swear, I just heard, I don't know, it almost sounded like a scream or something back behind me. And I turned to this moving. corner. If there was an air vent... It'd be sitting under that chair, being blocked by... There's no air vent over here. Bro, this chain right here is moving. We're getting a lot of stuff in here. What's up? Well, yeah, this chain started moving. I heard a what sound like an old girl like scream or something. I saw on. something move in this mirror while yeah. I was sitting over there. I don't know if it came from that mirror. When I turned and pointed at this dude, and this thing, uh, string coming down from the lamp was moving. Yeah. Not only that, we've been getting crazy voices with the spirit box, and our fans have called it a light anomaly. Yeah, they call it a light anomaly, and they've seen different things going on on the camera that I haven't caught. Yeah, I was coming up the stairs and the dog was coming down. And the dog. While Sean, Jonathan, and I continued to investigate upstairs, Kayla and Rachel started asking questions using the dowsing rods downstairs. This is Kayla and Rachel, and there was an orb that flew by your head just now. Yeah. It is around 9 o'clock. There was another orb. And we have a new toy this year. Are you a girl? Is it crossing? Crosses for no. Are you a boy? Is that opening? An orb just flew by. And another one. So it's a boy? Mm -hmm. Are you a demon? Yes or no? Well, while we were doing this, uh, there was orbs flying around. Yeah. Do you like me? Nope. No. Heck no. You like Caleb? Did you like the teddy bear we brought you? Guess not. Are you going to show yourself? Yes. Coming up. We're about to start with Sean. We're going to try something we've never done. I went downstairs. I heard shuffling going on in the piano room. Well, first, I saw a that white mist again. It sounds like it's coming from that end room over this way, and it stops right there. And that's when I got up to get the walkie-talkie and call it back. It is way colder in this room. Yeah, see, I'm going to put the camera here.
It had been an interesting night at the Cade Shepherd house. While Rachel and Kayla were getting a few responses on the dousing rods and several orbs in the kitchen, Jonathan, Sean, and I continued to experience things upstairs. Dude, I think I just saw an orb go in front of you. <laughs> Maybe. Unless it was a bug or something. This is John. Have to check it back. It's me. After asking if Bo was looking at whoever had just said had to on the spirit box, we all heard a little girl's voice reply with no. What's strange about this is that the voice of the little girl didn't come from the spirit box. It was right in the room with us. Was the dog looking at you coming down the stairs? Are you the little girl that people keep on seeing in here? We bought you a little teddy bear. It's We bought you a teddy bear and put it down in the dining room. It's sitting in the old, um... Is that Ouija board downstairs yours? Somebody's coming over on the walkie. Come back. Did I just say yesterday? Either that or it's time. What'd you guys say? Is that your Ouija board that's laying in the cabinet downstairs? Yeah, I've been charging this battery for an hour. Okay. Is it dead again? It's on one bar. Man. This thing's been up here charging for like an hour. What the hell? Whoa. The camera just went way out of focus. There's somebody. something up with that mirror. I keep on looking for it, but I don't know why. Is there a little girl here with us? Can you tell us her name? While we were experiencing these strange voices and responses over the spirit box, Rachel and Kayla heard walking sounds coming from the piano room. We hurried downstairs to investigate. And I figured it was her, but if she just sat still, then I probably hurt her too. This is so much better. Okay, we're coming down. It's over. That's her room there. 
I'm sitting in that chair where you were sitting and I heard some devolve from there to that right. As it turns out, they weren't the only ones to hear the footsteps. Earlier during our initial walk through the house, Jonathan had heard footsteps roaming the first floor, and he had also seen a white mist in there twice. Uh, in our room? Start that over. Okay, well it started when I was about five years old. <laughs> okay, so when I was downstairs, the reason why it took me so long to get back up here, I went downstairs, I heard shuffling going on in the piano room. Well, first, I saw a that white mist again in the piano room. And then I sat there and waited, and then I heard shuffling coming from piano room. Then I heard it coming from the, I guess, dining room? So I got up, went into the dining room, and I heard shuffling going on in the room that I just came out of. As I heard that, I also heard what sounded like either footsteps going up or down the stairs. I'm not too sure. But you can tell the difference when somebody's coming from up here downstairs. This didn't sound like that. It, it sounded like footsteps just going on the stairs. We continued our investigation downstairs. If you're in here with us, I have a device in my hand with a light on it. If you come close to it, it should make the light jump up to different colors. Do you think you can make it turn orange for me? All you have to do is come close to it and it'll light up further. It's on green right now. Can you turn it to yellow or orange? Apparently we're I getting just felt a, something touch my back. A lot of orange. Like at the bottom of my shirt. Right, right there. I felt like somebody just like, just touched me. What did that say? What was that? It sounded like it went Sean. It, it did, and it was dark. Whoa. Well, I just it. saw. Whoa, we're getting something stuck in my left side. That's not me. It just said me. Yeah, it said it was me. Dude, something's touched. It was touching right. Whoa, whoa, dude, my left shoulder just went cold and numb. Dude, right on the edge of my shoulder went completely... Dude, my Whoa, whole... something just touched me. Something just touched my shirt. My whole left arm is feeling numb right now. Jonathan. Yeah. Did it say Jonathan? It said Jonathan. That's creepy. I like that. Touching with Sean and Jonathan right now? If you're touching one of us, why don't you touch the device in my hand? Make it light up. Can you do that? Did I just say goodbye? Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. Do you want Sean to leave? Yes. That was a female voice. Do you, yes. do you want me to stay? After hearing the spirit box say both Sean and Jonathan's names, as well as goodbye, it seemed like something wanted Sean to leave. When Jonathan asked if it wanted him to stay, a large orb flies right in front of the camera. Do you want Sean to leave? Yes. That was a female voice. Do, yes. do you want me to stay? Dude, I just saw freaking shadow by Anna. Really? Yeah. If you want to use my arm, use my hand to write something. Please just let us know what you want to say. I'm here with the album box, dude. Whoa, it just said my name. I heard it. It just said my name. Are you here with us tonight? There was a lot of activity taking place at the Kate Shepherd house. 
With several voices caught on the spirit box in the room with the Ouija board, we continued to investigate. I'm gonna put this in my left hand since I was the one that was like killing. <laughs> when Randa Harrington says, I swear every spooks love Sean, even at Crooked Creek. They didn't say it like that though. If that was you that touched me. <laughs> Watch out, there's a chair there. <laughs> there's a chair right there. <laughs> Just so you know, there's a chair there. Can you come make this device lot up in my hand, please? Did I say let go? Yeah, so let go. You want me to let go of the device? Here, I'll set it on the table. Yeah. Right right before his arm went numb, I saw this white mist. Dude, my hand's like still tingling. Yeah, I saw a white mist do this number and then back. Where at? Right here, when we were standing in here. Huh? I turned around when I said, dude, I saw a white mist pop its head like that. That's like what I saw with you right there. Yeah, yeah. You saw we were doing the interviews. Yeah, and then right after I saw that, you had that happen to you. And then, I feel like I'm getting goosebumps, but I'm not. Yeah, it is. Sorry if I'm a horrible uh, <laughs> wifey person. We're just getting so much activity right now. Okay, we have a ball on the back of this couch. It's lit up. You think you could move the ball for us? Maybe knock it off the couch. Jump? Uh, dude, dude, I just saw freaking shadow by the piano. Really? Yeah. It looked like it went straight behind the piano, like down. It looked like something crouched down behind the piano. Whoa! Dude, Whoa! Like, it said either it's Sean or it said something else. Dude, I've just got tingles all down my legs now. Are you in here by the piano? Seat? After a few minutes of catching these unexplained voices on the spirit box, as well as seeing strange shadows in the piano room, we made our way back to the kitchen where Rachel and Kayla were still using the dowsing rods. Tobacco pipe case that's in this bookshelf. Let not destroy some priceless artifact in yeah, this place. Yeah, I'm here with the dowsing rods, dude. Well, it just said my name. I heard it. It just said my name. Are you here with us tonight? I can't make how much mix scene now. This is Rachel with the dowsing rod. Whoa. Those just moved right when I got here. Are you here with us tonight? So, for everybody on Facebook, if the dowsing rods split apart like that, that means yes. If they come together, it means no. You can also use dowsing rods to find water. Are you the little girl that haunts this place? Did you die here? No. Do you like this teddy bear we got you? Susan asked, can I say my mom's name? She's saying it likes the teddy bear. See, this means yes. That was going off. That's going off. Yeah, that's off. going off. None of us are moving. See, this means yes. None of us is here except for either me or Rachel. I think it's the closest. That's you. Could you make the light turn red? No. You Can make you go please there. make the light turn red? 
Thank you. It was at this point in our investigation where we decided to try something new. A technique called spirit writing. Sean volunteered to be blindfolded and allow one of the spirits of the Kate Shepherd house to use his hand to write a message. I think you need two pins for this. Kate Shepherd used to be a writer. Dude, I already got a weird feeling going on. I don't even, I don't know if it's just because I'm blindfolded or what, but I feel, I don't know, I feel weird. Should my hand be like in the air or should it be resting on the table? I don't know. I guess. I think it's usually resting on the pad, I guess. No. Kind of like you got it now. No, they had it because didn't Ronald Reagan's wife do that? Ronald Reagan? I can't remember. You have to ask if it'll take your hand on the rest. Should I like get down? With the sickness? Probably. <laughs> Like Should I get in the floor? Like, you're, you're good. Just, 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 just go with it. If you want to get in the floor, the floor's lava. Should I turn the pad sideways? I probably would. I guess I'll start running like sideways. Yeah, me too. I got a weird feeling. Whoa, dude. Alright, I'm completely blown forward. I have no clue what's happening around me. But... And I don't know what you're seeing exactly, but was there something to the left of me? No. There was something that flew from your left side, and then like three of them flew away from your hand. Dude, okay, my eyes are closed, and I'm blindfolded, but I felt like Did you see that? I could see a light. It like it was like it flickered on the left side of me. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude, they're all over the place. Like I felt like I felt like something was like. I don't know, like it moved or something. Like I, I literally saw white light with my eyes closed, if that makes any sense. <laughs> okay, just... Okay, if there's anybody here with me tonight and you want to communicate and you have anything that you'd like to say to us, feel free to use my hand and the pen that's in my hand to write us something. You can draw us a picture. You can write your name. You can write a sentence. Dude, I got major pressure on the back of my head. I feel like something or... Felt, what the heck? I just felt like, this is gonna sound weird, but it almost felt like somebody blew into my right ear. Say Whoa. something, you can use Sean's hand to write it down. Orbs everywhere. Can you sign your orbs, name? Orbs everywhere. Whoa, dude, it just felt like somebody sat down on this couch next to me. Oh, that was me. I'm messing with you, that wasn't me. Dude, the cushion next to me is moving. Which side, left or right? My left side. It feels like somebody just like sat down. It feels like they're moving the freaking cushion next to me or something. It wasn't long before Sean started to feel weird. He could also feel the pen moving freely in his still hand. Can you write your name? Dude, did you just move the pen? I'm trying to be like as still as possible. And like it pulled back. Yeah. I can feel the pen like moving. But I don't know if it's like me moving my arm, but I'm trying to be Your hands was like it's moving a little bit. I can feel the pen moving, but I don't like like I'm not moving I'm trying not to move my hand. Yeah, your hands move. Or should I let my hand go? Just let it move. <laughs> let yeah, one both of those just went off. 
What went off? That one's going off again. I think that's a yes. So, do you want the? Do you want his hand to go a little bit looser than what it is? If so, make the dude. Red. Dude. I let my hand go numb, and it just started going to the right. Let it, let it go to the right. Though. And I swear, dude, it feels like somebody is sitting next to me in this freaking chair. Dude, do you have any control over your hand right now? I'm, I'm trying not, I'm just trying to be completely still as much as I can. Yeah, I just feel so freaking sad right now. Like, I haven't felt this feeling, like, since Little Vaughn. At one point, Sean said he could feel the pen moving, so I zoom in. Look closely. Sean's hand is completely still, but the pen is moving freely in his fingers. That pen is moving on its own. Like your fingers aren't even moving. After trying the spirit writing session, we checked the notebook to find several lines and only what appeared to be a fancy looking M or a no. We moved to the kitchen to continue, but it wasn't long before I felt as though something was watching us from the room with the Ouija board. Watch the doorway leading to the piano room. You can see several orbs flying in that direction. If there's anybody here with us, feel free to use my hand to write anything you want to say or answer any question we ask. So serious right now. <laughs> the tire is kicking. I feel bad. Can you tell me your name? Can you spell out your name? As I went to join the group again, suddenly I felt as though I needed to go upstairs. So I made my way to the room where most of the guests have seen the little girl spirit. had some strange things going on here. Um, it hasn't been like extremely active yet, but there's definitely potential. We've heard uh, voices coming through on the spirit box, seen shadows moving around, and um,
Anybody in here? Can you give me a sign of your presence? Okay, there was an orb right as I asked that. I just heard something. Come to the doorway. Little girl, are you here? You can show yourself, you don't have to be afraid. I've heard that a lot of people have seen you here. We just want to see you, that's all. We're not here to hurt you in any way. We just want to know that you're here. After hearing these knocking sounds and opening the door, expecting a little girl to be standing there telling me I only had seven days left to live, I made my way back down to the group. It wasn't much longer after that, things fell silent in the Kate Shepherd house, and we turned in for the night. Our night at the Kate Shepherd house was a night I will always remember. It wasn't until we got home and went over our footage that we realized just how much stuff we actually caught. If you're looking for the possibility of experiencing something paranormal, as well as waking up to the best beignets this side of Louisiana, and be sure to book a room at the Kate Shepherd Bed and Breakfast. You may just get a visit from the spirit of a little girl rumored to haunt it, or maybe even someone else. Make your reservations today to see why the Kate Shepherd House is apart. of Alabama's most haunted. This has uh, been the majority of our drive here. This is Alabama, people. No, no spookums yet. Uh, we did see what looked like the, a haunted house, but it turns out it was just a big bouncy house on a bridge for some reason. So, uh, yeah, there's that. And, um, uh, Sean. Sean? Take it away. <laughs> you got the camera, Sean. You're famous. Woo! No, there's a sunroof. Huh? <laughs> Jonathan, we can't take him anywhere. <laughs> Kevin, he's driving. Hi, I'm driving. Not well, but I'm driving. Kayla. And the baby. And the baby. And the baby. And the new member to our team. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs>